We have managed to decode the oldest story in the world. By using the right frequency, we were able to stabilize this ancient rift, which represents a type of time interference. We are now synthesizing the ancient knowledge that this anomaly radiates. It took us countless hours to make the synchronization as harmonious as possible, and we now present the results in a compact and concise manner. I will pause the transmission from time to time to summarize the data. I'm now switching life to the rift to start the decoding process. You think you know the story? Think again. Tablet 4. At 20 leagues they broke for some food. At 30 leagues they stopped for the night, walking 50 leagues in a whole day, a walk of a month and a half. I will record and interpret the original texts while we have the rift stabilized. I think we have the right synthwave frequency and can continue. On the third day, they drew near to Lebanon. They dug a well facing Shamash, the setting sun. Gilgamesh climbed up a mountain peak, made a libation of flour and said, Mountain, bring me a dream, a favorable message from Shamash. And Kidu prepared a sleeping place for him for the night. A violent wind passed through, so he attached a covering. He made him lie down and in a circle, they like grain from the mountain. While Gilgamesh rested his chin on his knees, sleep that pours over mankind overtook him. In the middle of the night, his sleep came to an end, so he got up and said to his friend, My friend, did you not call out to me? Why did I wake up? Did you not touch me? Why am I so disturbed? Did a god pass by? Why are my muscles trembling? Enkidu, my friend, I have had a dream, and the dream I had was deeply disturbing. Gilgamesh and Enkidu journey towards the Cedar Forest home of Humbaba, traversing vast distances. Gilgamesh has a dream and seeks its interpretation from Enkidu. Enkidu interprets the dream as favorable, signaling that they will defeat Humbaba. In the mountain gorges, the mountain fell down on us. We, like flies. He who was born in the wilderness, Enkidu, interpreted the dream for his friend. My friend, your dream is favorable. The dream is extremely important. My friend, the mountain which you saw in the dream is Humbaba. It means we will capture Humbaba and kill him and throw his corpse into the wasteland. In the morning there will be a favorable message from Shamash. At 20 leagues they broke for some food. At 30 leagues they stopped for the night, walking 50 leagues in a whole day, a walk of a month and a half. They dug a well facing Shamash. Gilgamesh climbed up a mountain peak, made a libation of flour and said, Mountain, bring me a dream, a favorable message from Shamash. Enkidu prepared a sleeping place for him for the night. A violent wind passed through, so he attached a covering. He made him lie down, and in a circle, they ate like grain from the mountain. While Gilgamesh rested his chin on his knees, sleep that pours over mankind overtook him. In the middle of the night, his sleep came to an end. So he got up and said to his friend, My friend, did you not call out to me? Why did I wake up? Did you not touch me? Why am I so disturbed? Did a god pass by? Why are my muscles trembling? Enkidu, my friend, I have had a dream. Besides my first dream, a second. Gilgamesh experiences a second dream involving a wild bull and is provided water by a figure he later recognizes. Enkidu interprets the bull as Shamash, a god who will aid them, and the figure providing water as Lugalbanda, Gilgamesh's father, offering protection and honor. And the dream I had, so striking, so disturbing. I was grappling with a wild bull of the wilderness. With his bellow, he split the ground, a cloud of dust sent to the sky. I sank to my knees in front of him. He holds that encircled my arm, my tongue hung out, my temples throbbed. He gave me water to drink from his water skin. My friend, the god to whom we go is not the wild bull. He is totally different. The wild bull that you saw is Shamash, the protector. In difficulties, he holds our hand. The one who gave you water to drink from his water skin is your personal god, who brings honor to you, Lugalbanda. We should join together and do one thing, a deed such as has never before been done in the land. At 20 leagues they broke for some food. At 30 leagues they stopped for the night, 
walking 50 leagues in a whole day, a walk of a month and a half. They dug a well facing Shamash. Gilgamesh climbed up a mountain peak, made a libation of flour and said, Mountain, bring me a dream, a favorable message from Shamash. Enkidu prepared a sleeping place for him for the night. A violent wind passed through, so he attached a covering. He made him lie down, and in a circle, thick like grain from the mountain. While Gilgamesh rested his chin on his knees, sleep that pours over mankind overtook him. In the middle of the night, his sleep came to an end. So he got up and said to his friend, My friend, did you not call out to me? Why did I wake up? Did you not touch me? Why am I so disturbed? Did a god pass by? Why are my muscles trembling? In Kidu, my friend, I have had a third dream, and the dream I had was deeply disturbing. The heavens roared and the earth rumbled. Then it became deathly still, and darkness loomed. A bolt of lightning cracked and a fire broke out, and where it kept thickening, there rained death. Then the white-hot name dimmed, and the fire went out, and everything that had been falling around turned to ash. Gilgamesh narrates a third dream involving environmental chaos and death, which seems to foretell an ominous event. The two heroes proceed, notwithstanding the potentially foreboding message of the dream. Let us go down into the plain so we can talk it over. Enkidu heard the dream that he had presented and paid heed to Gilgamesh. At 20 leagues they broke for some food. At 30 leagues they stopped for the night, walking 50 leagues in a whole day, a walk of a month and a half. They dug a well facing Shamash. Gilgamesh climbed up a mountain peak, made a libation of flour and said, Mountain, bring me a dream, a favorable message from Shamash. Enkidu prepared a sleeping place for him for the night. A violent wind passed through, so he attached a covering. He made him lie down and, in a circle, they like grain from the mountain. While Gilgamesh rested his chin on his knees, sleep that pours over mankind overtook him. In the middle of the night, his sleep came to an end, so he got up and said to his friend, My friend, did you not call out to me? Why did I wake up? Did you not touch me? Why am I so disturbed? Did a god pass by? Why are my muscles trembling? Enkidu, my friend, I have had a fourth dream, and the dream I had was deeply disturbing. He was cubits tall. Gilgamesh, Enkidu listened to his dream. The dream that you had is favorable. It is extremely important. My friend, this Humbaba, before it becomes light, we will achieve victory over him, Humbaba, against whom we rage. We will triumph over him. In the morning, there will be a favorable message from Shamash. Another dream, somewhat obscure, is presented by Gilgamesh. Enkidu, consistently the interpreter, perceives this dream too as favorable, asserting they will conquer Humbaba. At 20 leagues, they broke for some food. At 30 leagues, they stopped for the night, walking 50 leagues in a whole day, a walk of a month and a half. They dug a well facing Shamash. Gilgamesh climbed up a mountain peak, made a libation of flour and said, Mountain, bring me a dream, a favorable message from Shamash. Enkidu prepared a sleeping place for him for the night. A violent wind passed through, so he attached a covering. He made him lie down and in a circle. They, like grain from the mountain. While Gilgamesh rested his chin on his knees, sleep that pours over mankind overtook him. In the middle of the night, his sleep came to an end. So he got up and said to his friend, my friend, did you not call out to me? Why did I wake up? Did you not touch me? Why am I so disturbed? Did a god pass by? Why are my muscles trembling? Enkidu, my friend, I had a fifth dream, and the dream I had was deeply disturbing. His tears were running in the presence of Shamash. What you said in Uruk, be mindful of it. Stand by me. Gilgamesh, the offspring of Uruk Havan. Shamash heard what issued from his mouth and suddenly there resounded a warning sound from the sky. Hurry, stand by him so that Humbaba does not enter the forest and does not go down into the thickets and hide. He has not put on his seven coats of armor. He is wearing only one, but has taken off six. Gilgamesh has a fifth dream and is visibly emotionally distraught. 
shedding tears. Although the dream's content isn't entirely clear, Shamash, the sun god, provides a warning about Humbaba's vulnerability without his seven coats of armor. They lunge at each other like raging wild bulls. One name he bellowed full of, the guardian of the forest bellowed, Humbaba-like. One alone cannot strangers. A slippery path is not feared by two people who help each other. Twice three times, a three-ply rope cannot be cut. The mighty lioness cubs can roll him over. An altercation ensues with Humbaba, though the text is fragmented and the precise details are unclear. There's a verbal exchange, or perhaps a physical confrontation, involving power and resilience. Enkidu spoke to Gilgamesh, saying, As soon as we have gone down into the cedar forest, let us split open the tree and strip off its branches. Gilgamesh spoke to Enkidu, saying, Why, my friend, we so wretchedly? We have crossed over all the mountains together in front of us before we have cut down the cedar. My friend, you who are so experienced in battle, who fighting you and need not fear death. Let your voice bellow forth like the kettle drum. Let the stiffness in your arms depart. Let the paralysis in your legs go away. Gilgamesh and Enkidu converse about fear, bravery and friendship, providing insights into their views on mortality and legacy. Gilgamesh encourages Enkidu to be brave and asserts that through their combats, they will establish a reputation that outlives them. Take my hand, my friend. We will go on together. Your heart should burn to do battle. Pay no heed to death. Do not lose heart. The one who watches from the side is a careful man, but the one who walks in front protects himself and saves his comrade, and through their fighting they establish fame. As the two of them reach the evergreen forest, they cut off their talk and stood still. Finally reaching the cedar forest, they cease their discussions, pausing in the face of their upcoming challenge. Gilgamesh and Enkidu are on a significant journey. They travel vast distances each day, and during their rests, Gilgamesh experiences a series of vivid dreams. These dreams are filled with symbolic images like mountains and wild bulls, even some intense natural occurrences. Each time he awakens, he shares these visions with Enkidu. Being the supportive friend, Enkidu interprets these dreams, reassuring Gilgamesh that they are positive omens. The dreams seem to center around their quest to confront the formidable Humbaba. Throughout their journey, there's a strong sense of camaraderie and encouragement between the two, emphasizing the depth of their friendship and their shared purpose. Join our adventures on Discord as we decipher ancient knowledge and craft stunning AI artworks. What do you believe these ancient wisdoms mean? Share your thoughts and watch this next.